What is up, y'all? Good morning. This is Med School Motivation Mornings. If you did not know, I'm Dr. Pine Set, the pre-med protein expert. And most mornings, I'm bringing you Med School Motivation Mornings, inspiration, motivation, information, help you get through your pre-med day. And uh, today, we're talking about disruptive medicine, and in particular, disruptive surgeons. And we're talking about how that relates to you as a disruptive pre-med and how you can reverse this as a trend when you're a pre-med to make your medical life better, but also make your pre-med life better and more successful. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. If you're enjoying these Med School Motivation Mornings so far, this is episode three, uh, like the video right now and comment. Let me know you're liking this stuff so I can keep doing it. Uh, Cause I'm supposed to be starting my case right now, but I'm in here with y'all doing this. Yes, Elizabeth caught us live. Utham, what up? Good morning. Leslie, hello. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Evans, good morning. Yeah, sorry I'm late this morning, guys. Uh, the schedule got a little flipped around. And uh, my kids are sick, I'm sick, my caseload is heavy today, so I got a little bit of a uh, off start today. But um, so quickly, so the disruptive culture in medicine. So if you guys don't know, what you should know is that medicine is a very stressful environment, right? And one of the big things you should think about in terms of going into a career in medicine is the stress you're gonna to have to deal with as a physician or as a nurse or as support staff. It's a very intense, stressful environment. People are dying, people are bleeding, people are sick, infections are everywhere stuff is happening right so there's lots of stress in your day good morning everybody good morning good morning Brent Herschel Miles good morning um, so there's lots of stress I don't know about you but when I get stressed sometimes I have difficulty not taking that stress out on other people and this happens a lot in medical culture where people get stressed high anxiety high pressure environment and they don't know how to handle it and they let it out on other people and let it out and it becomes a culture of medicine to have what we call disruptive behavior, where people have hostility, animosity, bad tone, they say harsh things, they curse at people, all these things that make a worse work environment, a worse team environment, and actually adversely affect patient outcomes. And in medicine right now, there's a big push to break this disruptive culture, not because they care about the patients, but because CEOs now are being liable for creating these hostile or allowing these hostile environments to persist and it negatively affecting patient care. And so CEOs are getting fines, having their salaries garnished. So now, right, not when it showed that patient data was a problem, but because it's financially an issue, they want to fix it. And so we had an interesting talk yesterday by one of the hospital executives who was breaking down disruptive behavior and how we're going to attack it. And I thought it was hilarious because I work in the operating room as an anesthesiologist. And if you guys were to guess, so they broke down OR personnel into four, four groups. One is surgery, two is anesthesia, three is nursing staff, and four is other. So these are reps, these are techs, these are other people. In terms of being the most disruptive or hostile or, right, or breaking up the good patient care flow, who do you think was number one out of those four groups? Who do you think is the most disruptive to proper OR patient care? Good morning, Tim. So I'm seeing lots of surgeons pop on my screen. You're absolutely right. Surgeons are number one, the most hostile, the most disruptive, okay? Who's number two? <laughs> Who would you guess is number two? So surgeons, anesthesia, nursing, or other? The answer, some of you guys are right, some of you guys are wrong, is nurses, followed by other, and then last is anesthesia. And if you guys know my personality, I actually have a pretty reasonable anesthesia personality in that we, we are fun-loving, we are calm in the storm, um, you know what I mean? We, we don't take things too seriously, and we can't because we do have a highly stressful job. And even though people don't think anesthesia is stressful, it is very stressful. And so we have to be more calm, more go with the flow, because we are essentially the glue that makes the team stick together. And so we were at the bottom of that list. But what was interesting was that they said that the reason nurses are number two is because they receive the brunt of the surgeon's wrath, which then makes them upset, and they're looking for anyone to take it out on. And they take it out on the other people, not the anesthesiologist. So the other people are upset, so they're trying to take it out on someone, so they're just kind of generally upset, bitter in the corner. And then as anesthesiologists, we're just sitting here watching, like watching the whole thing, separated from the hostility by the drape, um, the whole process. And so what they were talking about was that the surgery culture is a ish runs downhill culture where as an early like you're a medical student you want to work on surgery or we're going to work you to death you're an intern on surgery we're going to work you to death like it all rolls downhill so the people at the top of the hill they dictate to you and they feel better about themselves because they had to go through that same you know mistreatment and it's a culture of surgery and it comes out 
And then it became a chicken and the egg question where they were like, well, wait, is it the culture of surgery that selects these people? Or is it these people who select surgery because of their underlying personality and they like that culture? I was like, that's an interesting point. And the whole point of this, right, is that medicine is bad, but for you guys, you guys have to be conscious of your behavior, conscious how you treat people. And I think this is where it comes to showing empathy and the volunteering, all the things you guys do in pre-med, is make that the highlight of your life. Make giving, make caring of other people the highlight of your life if you guys wanna make the culture of medicine better for you guys as a future generation. But more importantly, what I thought about with this is that we all know people, and if you don't know this person, that means that you're that person, who is the wrench in the mechanism. When things are going great, when someone's trying to say something positive, there's always that one person who's like bringing negativity, who's bringing in sarcasm and bitterness and undermining, cutting out your legs when you're trying to do something positive, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? Everyone got one of those friends or one of those colleagues who's always like, man, like every time you enter the room, like the black cloud follows you. It's like stormy days as soon as you enter the room. And I think that it's easy when we get stressed out, when we get busy, to get to this mode where we don't recognize that we're becoming a complainer. And it's like we kind of mentioned a couple days ago, if you're focusing on problems, you're focusing on negativity, then you're gonna bring that into your life. You're gonna surround yourself with that because negative people are gonna to flock to you. They're gonna to wanna to gossip, wanna be negative. So if you wanna have positive people around you, you wanna have positive experiences, if you wanna make more of yourself, then you have to change that rhetoric and you can't be establishing disruptive behavior. You can't be a negative Nancy all the time because then people won't wanna be around you and you're gonna lose out on opportunities. And I've seen this where literally medical students are super smart, they come in to rotate, and everybody's like, no, we will never accept them into this residency because they have a horrible negative attitude. They're like, ooh, they're always complaining about some other service they were on. And they think it's flattering to us, like, oh, we love anesthesia, I love anesthesia, you know, this service was so bad, it was so terrible, because all this, and they're talking all this smack, and it's like, buddy, all we see is that you're talking all this smack on other people when they're not around, so we assume you're talking all this smack on us when we're not around. And you guys probably experience this with your friends where you're like, man, that guy's always talking trash. He probably talking trash on me, so I don't tell him anything, right? I keep it to myself. He's out the loop, right? And we, we have all that kind of stuff. So my point is, is don't be disruptive in that way. The other thing, and this is the last thing I'll say for this morning, is don't be disruptive to your flow and to your own internal teamwork. And what I mean by that is, is when you are studying, when you are working in your volunteer, when you're hanging out with your friends, when you're doing anything, don't practice disruptive, hostile behavior where you're undermining what the primary focus should be for the day. And what I mean by that is don't multitask, don't get distracted. In your life, when you have a task at hand, focus on the task at hand. And be weary and be on guard to knock down anything that is a disruptor, anything that is a distractor, anything that is a deterrent to what your primary focus should be. And too often people say, oh, I'm easily distracted. You're easily distracted because you haven't focused on being less distractible. You haven't focused on putting in systems around you in place that ward you away from all these things that can distract you. And for me, I always say I'm the king procrastinator. I am the king lazy person. I am a terrible, no good, don't wanna work type person. However, I work harder and I work more than everybody around me, I work smarter, not because I'm so anti-procrastination, but because I know when I'm aware of distractions and disruptors and my nature to want to procrastinate. And I set up my life to not sabotage. And the example I could use of this is, if you are a snacker like I am, if there's food in the house and it's sweet, I will eat it. So what I did was I recognized, listen, I have no ability to say no to sweets, so I keep no sweets in the house. And for you guys, you have to do the same way with your studying and with all the things you're doing. If you know you have difficulty sitting down and studying and not being distracted, not being disrupted, you have to build an infrastructure around you that wards off distractions. Don't leave it up to chance. Don't say, oh yes, I'm gonna be strong-minded today. When my roommate is nagging me, I'm just gonna say no. Forget that, your willpower sucks. We acknowledge that, my willpower sucks. Everybody's willpower sucks. But I get a lot done because, right, and someone just said it, uh, Jordan, your environment, right? your systems, the things you do, the habits you establish every single day that make it so that you don't have to make tricky decisions about what you should do. My friends don't have an opportunity to distract me because I'm away from them, right? The TV doesn't have a chance to distract me because I don't even have cable, right? The social media doesn't have a chance to distract me because I don't have notifications on. My phone's away from me. All these little things that you can do to make your life less disruptive. And so I know this is a lot of information in a short video, but remember, 
Disruptive is bad in medicine. Disruptive is bad for you as a pre-med. Disruptive is bad for all of us as a society. So be positive. Don't let things distract you. Be productive and get work done. I think I summed that up really nicely right there. All right, did you guys get that? <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video, like this video, share this video. If you are new, subscribe, turn on notifications because every day I'm bringing you guys this great information and I want to inspire you guys, I want to motivate you guys and like I said, I want to inform you guys to help you guys be better pre-meds and get to medical school. That's what it's all about here. So come, get some positivity in the morning and if you want this positivity to go throughout your whole day, join our community, the Cult of Greatness Facebook. It's our Facebook group on Facebook, The Cult of Greatness. It's super supportive. It's super positive. Thank you for everyone who's been contributing and being wonderful uh, in that group. So thank you guys so much. Um, as always, the website is premedproductivity.com. Premedproductivity.com. And now I'm going to go start my case. Everyone have a lovely, wonderful day. Meryl, hello. Bye, guys.